Okay, so I think it's uh, it's time to start, probably. Um, so um, thank you very much for for being here. Um, I'm uh, I'm really glad to be here at Poking here for for you. Actually, I'm. I'm coming from uh, uh, far away. I'm, uh, I'm just an Italian guy that moved to France and now is in Singapore. So uh, I'm a little bit lost uh, in translation or uh, just after two days of, uh, of training, uh, Docker training. So uh, be patient. Uh, I won't go really fast. I'm, uh, that's an introductory talk on Docker. I will speak about um, something else later. So it will be like a two talk uh, events, uh, tonight two parts, it will be also a third talk that I, I won't do. So let's uh, begin with this 101 uh, and uh, uh, one recommendation is uh, uh, interrupt me uh, when you want, don't hesitate, it will be more fun so I would be happy if you have uh, questions, if you have, if you uh, just want to ask some question, don't think it's a stupid question, just ask it. So don't hesitate. So first of all, let's uh, introduce myself. So uh, I'm an Italian based in Paris. I'm a software engineer at, at Zenica. That's a consulting uh, firm based in Paris. Um, and I'm an ex uh, uh, IBMer. So I work for the laboratory of development in Rome. Um, I became a Docker official trainer a few months ago uh, and uh, I've developed some uh, plugins for uh, uh, IDEs for Eclipse and for Sublime Text to integrate Docker inside these IDEs uh, and so I'm, uh, I, I became also contributor for the, for the Docker project and you have here my Twitter and GitHub handle if you want to contact me or if, you, if you're interested about these projects. So my uh, interest in Docker, at the, uh, for Docker at the beginning, started as a frustrated developer. Uh, in, in my teams, we always had the same problems. And this problem was like a developer that came and says, oh, uh, it doesn't work in production, but it, it works on my machine, so it's not my fault. So that's the first problem. The, the second thing that always happen is uh, you get into a new project and they say, okay, it will, it will take like five, five minutes to set up the development environment. And it turns out that it takes like one week, two weeks, and, and you, you don't manage after six months to run all the tests because there is always this test is, that fails and you don't know what you have to set up, etc. So these are some uh, problems that every developer uh, has lived. Uh, and so Docker, uh, two years ago, uh, seemed one, of one, one cool solution to solve these problems. Okay, but uh, before uh, getting into Docker, uh, the first reaction, the first thing is um, that we, we, we have as developer, we say, okay, we want to uh, have a way to set up uh, a consistent development environment. It, it should be repeatable wherever you want, or on your laptop, on a stage or production environment. And you want to be able to version it so you can roll back to uh, the previous version of your environment if you uh, need that, if you just uh, uh, understand that you introduce some regression on your uh, environment. And so you, you, you also want to, um, to automate it, to, to, to uh, automate the setup of your environment. And traditional virtual machine already have all uh, these features, so it could be a good solution. But a better solution are lightweight containers. Lightweight containers are, uh, as, it says, as the word says, uh, lighter than traditional virtual machines because they use less memory, they use uh, less disk space, they use less CPU. And how, how is that? How they work? So actually, 
uh, traditional virtual machine has to load another uh, operating system on top of the host operating system. So for example, if you have a Linux operating system, you know that you can run a Windows uh, operating system, so a Windows VM on top of that. But the drawback is that if you want to run Linux VM on top of Linux, you will have two uh, instances of exactly the same OS twice, and you are not going to uh, um, appreciate the fact that you're uh, reusing exactly the same library. So uh, the, the, virtual, the traditional virtual machine uh, are really expensive from this point of view. And lightweight containers, instead, uh, just all that share the same kernel, the same uh, um, operating system libraries of the host operating system. So they are, uh, they are isolated uh, from a higher point of view. Uh, so they, uh, uh, they, the, the isolation is, uh, there is less isolation. Uh, you, can, you can think of lightweight container as uh, curtains in a room and uh, traditional virtual machines are like walls in a room. So when you decide to make your room uh, constituted of small rooms and you build walls, you really are isolating this small room in your, in your, big, in your bigger room. Containers are curtains, so they are less isolated. You can just push the curtain and you can fall on the other, on the other room. But uh, they are uh, easier to set up. You can change that. You can, you can uh, decide that to put in another way. So they are really, really uh, easier to, to use. And that's uh, how a uh, container works. <coughs> so uh, the same containers are, are um, able to reuse some uh, uh, layer that are below. So that's uh, efficient from uh, CPU, memory, and disk access point of view. So uh, lightweight containers is a technology that existed uh, from mm, 15 years ago. Uh, there, there are Solaris zones or uh, BSD jails. There are the first examples of, of containers lightweight containers technologies and uh, on, on Linux you have LXC but what uh, Docker has done that, uh, that these, these technologies, these uh, implementation of lightweight con uh, containers haven't done before is make it easy to use, make it widely adopted and define a standard. So Docker today has a constitu constituted an organization to define the standards for containers. So uh, there won't be um, N technologies for N operating systems. So everybody is converging, conver converting ver to, the, to the same standard for uh, uh, containers runtimes, for the definition on how uh, images of containers uh, will be stored on disk. So these are, these are the reason why uh, Docker is so successful uh, these days. Not because it has invented a uh, new technology, but because, because it has uh, used it efficiently. So let's see if why uh, we say that it's uh, easy to run a container. Because to run a container, you just can uh, issue this command, and I will show you that right away. So what I'm uh, saying here is that I want to run a container uh, starting from an image uh, that it's called Ubuntu. So you understand that Ubuntu is a, uh, a Docker image that has some uh, utilities that you only find in Ubuntu. So 
that's not exactly an, uh, an Ubuntu operating system because uh, you will always use the kernel of your uh, the underlying operating system so you're not going to use the kernel of an Ubuntu operating system but libraries, utilities will be the one that you can find on an Ubuntu system so uh, you, you, you saw uh, uh, in less than one second we have started a container okay so and if I do top here you can see that there are just two processes uh, one process is stop and the other one is my bash shell that I just spawned. Uh, so what happened here when I run the container? Well, we have generated a, a, a Linux container. So uh, this means with, with na namespaces and, and C groups that are the technologies that Docker used to, uh, to, to run containers. A new file system for this container has been allocated. A uh, read-write layer has been mounted. A network interface, a network interface has been uh, created just for this container. Uh, the, this container has uh, an IP address independent from the host IP, uh, IP address. And we have run a process inside that container and this process is bash. And finally, we have captured the, the output and returned it to the client. So these are all the steps that are done by Docker to make it really simple uh, to, run, to run a process, to run a, a container. So we run uh, an Ubuntu container. Where does Ubuntu come from? Ubuntu is one of the, the thousand images that you can find on the Docker app. So you can find images uh, of Linux distribution like CentOS or uh, like Ubuntu or Debian, but you can also find images uh, of uh, application services, Redis, MySQL, Nginx, uh, WordPress, etc., etc. And it uh, every day you have ten uh, new images, new official images, and these images are maintained from for, from the developers that have built them. So the Ubuntu uh, uh, the Ubuntu images is maintained f from the guys from the team from Ubuntu. Uh, PostgreSQL images is maintained from the people from Postgre. So at the beginning, uh, there was the guy from Docker started to uh, to create these images, but quickly they uh, they just uh, give it back, give it back all what they did for uh, for these images to the uh, the, 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 the 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 real uh, maintainers of these products. Uh, so these are the official images, the, the images that are already uh, that are ready to use. But uh, you can also create a custom custom images, and you can do that with with Docker files. Uh, so here you see that we we, we are showing a, do a Docker file. So. Uh, <coughs> The first line says that we start that on top of an existing images, that's Ubuntu. And the second command, the second instruction, say that we are going to run something inside uh, the, the container to build the, this new image. So we are going to install a package that is curl. And the last, the last instruction is, uh, what we are, go what is the default command that is going to be executed when we do Docker run of uh, the image? So let's uh, let's see it. So let's exit from this one. I you already uh, prepared it, so you already have it. That's a really, really simple uh, Docker file. 
So from this we can build it, we can call it uh, my IP info and we can just say that the docker file uh, it's in the current directory. So it's connecting to uh, to the Docker app to retrieve uh, the the Debian image. So it's taking some time. Can be uh, slow. The Debian image is one of the smallest one. Um, Ubuntu is like two times the Debian image. Uh, you also have uh, the BusyBox image as there is the, the one that is smaller. And uh, uh, one image that is really popular now is the Alpine image that it's uh, uh, smaller than the, uh, than the, the, than the BusyBox one. And if you want to start from scratch, so really an image that has nothing inside, you want to install everything, every tools, so uh, you, you don't have bash, you don't have a shell, you don't have anything. Uh, okay, so uh, there is an image that is called scratch, so you can just uh, begin your Docker file with the instruction from scratch, and you will start with the smallest uh, Docker image that that exists. So let's try to understand what's happened here. Okay, I've got a guess. So maybe the package list wasn't updated. So let's let's see if that's that works better. So once this command uh, is being executed, we, we will have a new image in our local registry. We, we won't have it on the uh, Docker app that is public for everybody. So we will have in our local registry in, in, in my machine, we'll have a, a new image. Uh, that's the name of the image is th this name here. And I will be able uh, to, to run it with uh, this command. So it's, uh, it's working better now, it seems. <coughs> so how, how many of you uh, are, have, uh, have used Docker, have already used Docker? And how many of you has uh, as used in, uh, in pro working project? Okay, not, not so many people. And in production, who has uh, deployed in production Docker? Nobody. It's always like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, uh, we have built it successfully. So I've, I've called it uh, my P info, so we can just uh, issue the command like that. And do you remember what uh, the, the, the default command that I, I, I decided to run was the curl IP info IO uh, slash IP. So it should just uh, output my IP address. So 
so I will run it okay it's taking some time okay it takes some time but uh, finally it outputs my uh, my IP address so it works so you see it's uh, it's really easy and straightforward to create your new image to build it if you uh, if you have um, uh, a good internet connection it's it can be also faster than, than that uh, but that's that's one of the point of docker is you have to rely on the uh, on the network so I had a really uh, bad idea when I was coming here I had like uh, 13 hours of uh, of plane to come here so I said okay I will I will uh, try to work uh, with uh, some uh, some docker images that uh, I need to uh, to build some software project that I'm working on and actually uh, after two minutes I I realized that I couldn't do anything because I needed some uh, an internet connection. Otherwise, I I, I couldn't work with uh, with with containers. So uh, be careful with that because even if you say okay, I will I will pull all the images I need from internet. Uh, you probably when you when you build a custom images, you will have uh, to connect to the internet. Even if you just change one source file that's not in the internet. Because what happened is that if something uh, uh, change, if 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 nothing change in this file, and I just try to rebuild it, it Docker reuse uh, the cache, so the layers that he he, he built, uh, uh, he already built, so he reuse the cache. If I change a line. Just uh, let's say I change this line. I, I add another package to install. It will invalidate the cache for this line and for all the line that you have below. So if you have, if you here you are just copying a, a, a file that you have on your file system, but after that you are going to connect to the internet because you 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 run some apt-get install command. Well, you won't be able uh, to run them e even if this you already installed. Uh, these 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 packages uh, for a previous build. So uh, I, I I've asked you to to interrupt me at the beginning. So uh, nobody has uh, has interrupt. Yeah. What's, what's this host that you show us? Huh? Excuse me. The demo host. Where is it? The demo host. The uh, the. The Docker one zero one. The demo that it did where's, where's the host? Uh, you mean this one? Yeah. It's uh, on. So the question is, where is uh, my my daemon, the Docker daemon? Where it, where is running? It's running on my PC here on my laptop. That's a virtual machine. That's yeah. That's a good question. So the question is, it's a virtual machine. If and I think that you uh, you are asking that because. You're you're uh, guessing how uh, on a Mac OS can uh, Docker run because uh, Docker is just for Linux containers. Mm -hmm. So, am I wrong? What was it the, the 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 purpose of the question is is for that for that reason that you ask me is because I'm running a, a, a Mac and you are uh, you're wondering how Docker can run on, on a Mac, right? Is it no? She's thinking maybe you're running some. Hypervisors, or you you work on AWS or Google. That's what I'm saying. In Linux, you can already run Docker over there by using Windows or Mac. You probably still you need to boot up the virtual machine. So yeah, the 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 um, yeah you uh, the the uh, the answer is I'm running that on a, on a virtual machine. That's a Linux virtual machine that uh, it run in memory, so boots really fast. It boots in uh, in a few seconds, so it's l it's like uh, uh, if you uh, just open an application. So uh, it's called uh, Tiny Core Linux. It's the the distribution, um, and Docker uh, released when when you want to install on Windows or on Mac OS Docker, they give you something that they call a toolbox, and uh, so they provide you VirtualBox. 
So uh, the engine that will run your virtual machine, they, they provide you the image of this Linux distribution uh, that will has Docker installed inside and then they will give you uh, some other uh, visual tools uh, to run containers. Uh, that's not core OS. This tiny, tiny Linux, that's not core OS. Um, they distribute uh, tiny core Linux, so they distribute this distribution is called boot to Docker. It's not core, core OS, it's, uh, it's, um, um, it's, uh, it's an, an operating system to run containers, to run Docker or Rocket containers. Uh, but uh, it's not something that you usually install on your laptop. It's something that's uh, uh, really, it's a mature operating system that you want to use in production uh, to, uh, to deploy your, your containers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was wondering, um, am I correct to say that each of the images has its own uh, private IP yeah. address? Yeah. Uh, then what exactly is the... the Private network supposed to be. Uh, w the question is why? Why is th there is a? Uh no, what, what is the private network? Because ah. if each of them has its own IP address, it should be within a private network. Yeah. Of yeah. So the, the the question is if if every um, container uh, that I that you run has its own private uh, IP address, that should be a private network. So uh, I will, uh, instead of uh, trying to explain you, I will just show what, uh, what's the I ou output of some commands on my machine. So uh, currently here, I'm running a container. Just uh, the docker ps command show that I'm running a container. If I run... Uh, so let me go uh, because right now I, I on my I, I'm on my Mac Mac operating system. So I have to go on inside the virtual machine to uh, just uh, so see the network interfaces, the Docker network interfaces. So to go there, I I just have to do that. So I'm inside boot to Docker. So here I'm, I'm on Linux, and I. If I issue the if config, I can see that there are some weird stuff here. There is a, that's, that's first interface, network inter interface, that it's called Docker zero, and it's actually used as a bridge to connect uh, containers to the host uh, network interface. The host in network interface is ATH zero, okay? And Every, every time you start a new container, Docker starts a new virtual interface. Okay? So you will have uh, IP addresses that are, uh, that are allocated on that interface. Okay? So when, you, uh, when a container wants to uh, talk outside uh, of the... the of uh, the host, uh, he has to pass through the Docker bridge to the uh, network interface of the host, and um, somebody and, and he can accept packages from from the outside. Uh, but that's uh, that's the, the default option. Another option is uh, to just uh, use the network interface of uh, of the host. So I can uh, do that. Uh, with the option, if I do docker run, uh, I will run uh, um, just an image, a, a container that's, uh, that doesn't stop. So uh, that's, so net host. Okay, so I will run it in the background. So if I do if config now, 
it hasn't created a new uh, a new interface. It, it just has the this one, because the, this new container that I've created, uh, it's this one. It's not we 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 can't appreciate it here because uh, it's a little bit messy. Uh, we'll try to put make it smaller. But the, uh, if you see here, there is no ports that is uh, allocated. And here, there are ports that are mapped. It, it do, this means that port 8080 inside the container is mapped to the port 32770 uh, on the host. OK? So if you connect to the IP address of the host port uh, 32770 you will access the container and you will access the container also if you uh, co try to connect to the private IP address of the container with the port 8080 but this is a private address it's uh, uh, behind the n net uh, so you will you won't be able to access it from the outside okay more questions Docker itself also have the, the IP, right? Right now in your laptop, you have a Mac. Then you have your Docker image, uh, virtual machine. Yeah. And inside the Docker virtual machine, you have all the containers. Exactly. So the That's container itself also have its own IP file system. Uh, system yeah, and exactly. So that IP, how do you, man, let's see Docker and Docker need to talk to each other. So how <coughs> does that one tend to work as multiple options? Yeah. So um, the question is, uh, Docker has its own IP address because you are running inside the, you're running Docker in your Mac, so it has a separate uh, IP address. So how how does it work? So it's uh, it's the, the the architecture of Docker is uh, it's a client server architectures. So you have uh, you can have the client and the server on two remote uh, hosts and they can talk together because they talk uh, via HTTP, uh, so that's uh, a REST API. So it works perfectly even if uh, they are in two separate machines. And that's exactly what happens here, because there is uh, the virtual machine uh, that's, uh, that where, uh, where the, 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 the Linux distribution is running that has uh, its own IP address and you can access to it uh, through its own IP address and you, uh, you, you have access to the Docker daemon uh, API through this API. So to make it clear, so here I'm going to exit from, uh, from the virtual machine and I can ask boot to Docker to give me the IP address of the, the, the virtual machine. So if I want to access this port here, 32770, uh, off inside the virtual machine, uh, from outside, I can do something like curl. Uh, I can take that. And 32770. I don't know what will be the answer because I don't. OK, so that's an hello word. Uh, uh, application that is running there. So I can do that from outside, I can just put that. If I go inside, I can just curl local host with exactly this same thing here, and I will uh, have the same answer, okay? So because now I'm, I'm on local host, and I, I'm inside the, the host where Docker is. But if I'm outside, I can, also, I can still access uh, to the containers using the host IP address. Is there a way for me to even do SSH into the Docker itself? No, there, actually there is no, when, when, we, when you run um, a container, so let's take this one for example, uh, as we saw before, the, the, you have just one process that it's running inside that. It's the process uh, that uh, it's executed with this command. So you don't have an SSH daemon. So you don't, you, 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 there, there, there is no SSH server, so you can't access uh, via SSH. 
So the way you, you have um, a couple of ways to have access inside a running container. Uh, there is a command that it's doc docker exec, so it allows you to execute a command inside a, a, a running container. So for example, uh, here I should have uh, this container that this one with this ID that I, I, I just ran before, that's still running. If I want, I can exec uh, like that. And I can decide to exec this command inside, so bash. Huh. Bash is not inside here, okay. So. So I've run, so unfortunately bash wasn't there, maybe, maybe uh, sh was here, I don't know. Yeah, so, so you, you see uh, I'm, I'm inside, I, I executed a new command inside this container. So if I, oh, okay, so top is here, so I can see now, I, there is the shell that I just uh, uh, executed there is the command, uh, the default command of, uh, of, the, of the container, there is stop, and there is a sleep one that is executed uh, uh, once in a while. So these are the, so uh, if I do another docker exec on the same container, it will be another process. So I can add process, I can get into uh, a container in this way, but there is no SSH server running uh, on that. Okay, um, is there any, any more questions? Oh, yeah, question. yeah. How does two containers stop between them? How, how do? Between two containers. Yeah. How, does it, how, how can a container communicate with another uh, Okay, that's a, that's a really good question. The question is how you can uh, communicate between two containers. Well, actually I had uh, some slide to talk about that. Uh, so. Yeah, we will, we will talk about volumes uh, later, so I will just uh, uh, take the chance to talk about uh, links to let uh, container talk uh, together. Uh, just another thing too. Uh, there's an IP address that came, right? 32770, that's what it used IP address. Yeah? Not IP, the port. Yeah. Is there a way to control the port, or it randomly picks the available port from the host and it takes so the question is uh, if the port that it's exposed outside, uh, uh, so that it's the way to access inside the, to the services of the container, uh, is, can be uh, selected or it's uh, randomly picked by uh, Docker. Uh, so it depends on, uh, you can do both. I mean, um, uh, by default, Docker, uh, to take, take a random number. And that's because you want to run uh, many instances of the same exact containers. Uh, for example, you want to run Apache. You want to run it 10 instances of Apache on the same server. Uh, so every instance will run on port 80. So you, you, you can't uh, just map the port 80 for every, every container on the, on the uh, host uh, interface, network interface. So what you will do, you will pick random ports for, for everybody. So it, that's, uh, that's the way uh, Docker works. But if you want to pick a precise port, you can select it. And actually, uh, I think I don't have a slide for that. Okay, we, we will see it here. You see ports, uh, there is a mapping, but actually uh, you won't be, w uh, I'm not going to, to talk uh, a lot about that, but uh, maybe it's, uh, it's a time to do uh, a break. Uh, yeah, and we, we can uh, uh, just continue in, uh, in five minutes. Okay. running images that have been uh, built 
for Linux, for example, running, run, run that on another Unix operating system, for example, for Solaris or for BSD or HPUX. So the, the answer is uh, no, you, 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 will, you will be tied to the uh, operating system w for, for whom the uh, image has been built. So you won't be able to run a Windows uh, container on Linux. That's impossible. So that's also the challenge for, uh, uh, for Docker today because they have built this uh, big Docker, Docker hub uh, with uh, thousands of images but they haven't uh, pre they, they are not prepared for uh, uh, Windows and Linux version of the same image. But because let's say uh, MySQL, you, you have the official image for MySQL, but how can I uh, just uh, say, okay, I'm, I'm running it on Linux, so I want the uh, Linux version, not the Windows version. So I will, how they will transform the Docker app when they will have to support multiple operating systems. So I don't know, I don't know uh, how, how it works, how, if they are uh, uh, working on that. What I, what I know is that I, I've tried to uh, execute, to run the, 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 the Windows uh, 2016 uh, uh, beta, Windows Server 2016, uh, and actually the, the, the main problem is that there isn't any base images I mean, that we can pull from the Docker app. So you don't know how to start a container because if you don't have the uh, f uh, uh, base image, so you can't write your Docker file from something. You can't uh, just do a Docker run uh, Windows uh, 7. You, ca you can't because there isn't a Windows 7 image. So um, actually, the, it's, it's, uh, it's more complicated than, than that. So the you can't just build an image and run it really everywhere. You, you can build an image, you can, you, you can run on the operating system where the uh, uh, image has, has been built. Okay, so let's uh, uh, continue with, uh, with the, the, the next slide is about the persistence of, of data. And I wanted just to introduce the, this uh, cattle versus pets uh, thing that everybody talks about. So the um, we we call uh, we, we say that uh, containers are like uh, cattle because you can just uh, use it and throw them away you don't have just to take care of them like like if you take uh, care of of pets so traditional virtual machine are like pets so if you uh, uh, have a template you uh, continue to maintain it uh, to uh, update it uh, instead, containers are like you use it one time and you throw it away. So to demonstrate that, just uh, do run two times the same the same container. Okay, so I'm back here. Uh, so I'm r inside the container. So I'm going to install uh, curl as before. I'm going to do update. Okay, it's taking some time. Okay, so uh, the, um, it's taking a lot of time just to do that. So the, the, um, what I wanted to show is that if you run twice this, this command and you have changed something like, for example, installing curl, and I just exit from the container and just re-execute it again with the, the second command, I won't find uh, the, curl that, the curl package that I just installed. Uh, that's because when I run a container, I always start from scratch. 
I, I don't reuse uh, uh, the, the last uh, image Ubuntu that I, that I just run. I always start from scratch. So that's the way uh, Docker works and that's by design it's, uh, it works like that. So okay, it's taking a lot, a lot. So if, uh, if you want to, uh, to persist data, so you, you between a run and the other of, of a container, so uh, you want to persist some data, so you want, for example, you have an application that has some state, you need to persist it. And uh, uh, volumes are the way to uh, persist data. So here we are mounting uh, inside the Ubuntu container, we are mounting this folder from the host inside the container, inside the folder data. So if we do some changes inside the folder data when we are running the container, well, this data will be persisted on the file system of the host. So you, this data won't be lost even if we uh, run it again and again, the, the, the container. So, I will just do a simpler thing. Here, I will just uh, do like touch of uh, a file uh, called foo. So, I have a new file here that is called foo. So, if I just uh, restart this, and I look for foo, it's not here anymore because I just uh, restarted uh, a container for, from scratch. Now, let's say that you want to use volume, so we just rerun with the same options and we just uh, uh, share the current folder into, into data folder inside the container. So it's better to put it that way. So let's just uh, touch a file into data foo. Okay. Okay. So I run it again. So full file is still here when I run it again. So that's the way to persist data. So it's really straightforward, really, really simple. It's a powerful way to, uh, to save the state of, of an application. Otherwise, uh, in, in, in containers, you don't want, you, you usually don't save state of application inside the containers. You use volume to do that. And the other uh, good thing about volumes is that they, that they use the 100% uh, of the performance of the access of the, of the uh, disk of the operating system. They are not uh, using what we call the copy and write layer, extra layer that slow that make uh, writing on disk slower. So when you access the volume, you are accessing uh, with the operating system uh, performance. So uh, that's, it's really fast to write stuff on uh, on a volume. It's faster. So if you have to write a lot of things on the on the on the file system, it's better if you write it in inside a, a volume. Uh, so uh, f that's about uh, the volumes. The order. Uh, I will finish with uh, with that for uh, uh, for the the Docker uh, command line option. The the another really important option is, is the link option. Is uh, we are coming to uh, we are talking now about wh what you were uh, uh, asking before is how we we uh, connect uh, containers together. Well, uh, if uh, if for example, let's try. Oops, uh, if we run. Um, a Tomcat server, and we want uh, to have access to the to this to this Tomcat server from another container. We can just use 
this link option with the name of the container that we, we, just, we just run. So let's try it out. Okay, so we have now uh, an, a Tomcat container that it's uh, that it's running. You see, you can see the command uh, that it's uh, uh, run to run the, the container. The, so the, the default command of of, uh, of the container, and it's running on port 8080. But it's that's the private port. It's not the public one. So you, it's not available from the outside. You 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 don't have a way to ac to, to access to it. But if we just uh, run um, yes, another container and link to it, so I can just curl my server 8080 huh. I don't have that so let's uh, Okay, Fedora has already, so I don't have to install it. I, I, I would have lost some time. So as you see, I have access to the to the host. I this all the HTML page I'm, that I'm, I'm, I'm downloading. It. So from within. The the, 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 the the container I can see the other containers using this link parameter and what it does the link parameter is just adding in ATC host uh, my server entry with the private IP address of of uh, of the container. Okay, so that's uh, the last thing for the for the introduction is uh, about uh, how do we um, do we configure um, a multitude of containers that has to interact together. So we s we have uh, seen the Docker file. The Docker file allows us to uh, just uh, define one container, but if we want. Uh, to define many containers and we want to define to configure in a in a, a source file uh, the way these containers uh, interact together we can use uh, docker compose so this is a docker compose uh, yaml file and there are two sections the first one is a db section so that, that it will uh, just start an a container uh, from the Postgres image. The second session is a web uh, web section, and it will start a container from a Docker file that it's in current in the current directory. We can tell it from the build instruction. That is uh, the first instruction there. Um, we can see that uh, we can uh, define the volumes that are uh, mounted inside the web container and the port that are exposed and the links to other containers and so there is just the links to another container and it's the DB container that is here. So it's really uh, straightforward 
with the Docker Compose YML files to uh, uh, configure multiple uh, containers that just have to work together. So it's the simpler uh, way to do orchestration. So it's a single host, or Docker Compose does single host orchestration. So more complex tool like uh, Mesos from, from, uh, from Twitter and uh, Kubernetes from, uh, from Google, they do orchestration for distributed systems, so on many computers. So Docker Compose is, uh, uh, does the same thing, but just in one host. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's simpler. OK, so that's uh, all for, for this part. So uh, I wanted also to, to talk, and I, I just have uh, 10 minutes uh, to talk about uh, uh, the, the, the Java development uh, workflow. But uh, maybe uh, if you have some question, we can just leave these 10 minutes for question more than for uh, introduction. Because I, I, I won't have the time to uh, talk about uh, uh, the Java development workflow uh, with Docker. Maybe it will be the, the next occasion. Yeah. How is the portability from Windows to Mac? So let's say I have uh, created a container in Mac. How uh, can I just port it over and then run on? Is it like uh, the portability is different, difficult? Uh, so the question is about how um, do we can we port the portability of a Linux container in, in um, uh, Mac or Windows uh, operating system. Yes. So um, that's, uh, the, 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 there is no uh, portability except for, uh, if we run virtual machine with Linux inside on Mac and Windows. So for example, I'm running here, I'm running Linux container and I have uh, a Mac with uh, OS X in installed. So I can do that because I run a Linux uh, virtual machine. Uh, for Windows, is the same. Is the same thing. Uh, you you won't be able. Th there is no. Uh, sti there is sto still no um, Docker daemon uh, natively running on uh, OS X and on Windows. There is still not uh, here. But when it will be here, containers won't be portable from one operating system to the other because we we. Uh, we just, uh, the, the reason is shown here, uh, containers share the operating system. So they are based on the operating system that is here. So if you change, if you uh, put here Linux, this application will, will work. If you put Windows, they won't be able to work because they, they won't have the, the, main, the same system call, they won't have the same libraries, so they won't be able to... Uh, it's like if you put a, a Windows binary inside a Linux uh, uh, operating system, you, you won't be able to execute it. Yes? Uh, maybe this is a non-technical question, but if I was to take this... I'm very new to this, right? Uh, if I was to take this to a typical organization, who would this excite more, most, and what business problem does it solve? <laughs> so the question is, uh, in an organization, I think uh, uh, you, that you talk about the IT organization mainly, uh, who uh, will be the people, the, so the groups that will be more uh, happy, excited about this technology, and what are exactly the a business problem that are addressed uh, by Docker. So if I have to say, I think that uh, the people that has been more excited about Docker are uh, the developers. It's mostly developers. Uh, system administrators, uh, they just look Docker as the new technology they, that uh, has, has came out and they are not uh, still not sure if is something that they have to adopt or not, um, but uh, but that's that's changing because Docker is doing really a, a great effort to give the tools that the system administrators need uh, to install it reliably in, in a reliable uh, way on production. So that's that's changing. 
for for uh, the business uh, for the the, the 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 problems that are addressed by by Docker, it's uh, it's having uh, a, s a unique way to install the same the same thing on your laptop, on on uh, uh, the laptop of your colleague, and on the production server. So you don't have to bother uh, if you have to uh, have a dependency or of a particular version of Java or a particular version of Ruby. That's that was the nightmare. Uh, you say, ah, actually I have a, a Python 2.7 and this new application that I loved a lot uh, needs Python 3.4 and uh, actually I don't know what to do uh, because I, 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 how can I... Um, uh, work with both together. So there are ways to, to, to work with two versions of Python, but uh, it's, it's always like uh, something that you, you don't want to, uh, to be in that situation. So with Docker, you will never be in this situation because every container will contain all the dependencies of uh, the application. So uh, you, will, you can have uh, for every version of uh, of uh, a framework, you can have a different containers. So you can uh, just have a 10 version, 10 different version of Java running together on the sa on the same uh, on the same machine inside Docker containers, and you don't have problems. with just say uh, to to uh, your colleague, oh, so you have to set up your uh, development environment. You just have to uh, to do. Uh, a Docker build of a Docker file, and you will you will be all set. Docker build, Docker run, and you will running the application. Uh, okay. How is resource being managed in terms of system resource like CPU, memory, and all that? How do you ensure in Docker ensure that any misbehave container that consumes all Okay, so the question is, uh, how you can you uh, make sure that uh, Docker won't be consuming? a uh, lot of cpu memory resources well they they uh, there is like there are some flags that you can uh, use when you run docker so you can see them if you um, do docker run help and actually if i grab and i put limit you can see that there is a cp CPU period, CPU quota, memory, you limit. Th these are all parameters that you can use when you run a container to limit the resources uh, that is going to use. You want that uh, uh, a container d uh, doesn't use more than 2% uh, of your CPU, you can set it with this flag. So how will share a custom image to my if you want to show, we, we if so the question is how um, can somebody share uh, the the Docker images that he just built with a Docker file um, with uh, with its colleague? So you have two ways, uh, at least two ways. Uh, the first way is just you can uh, put the Docker file in your source repository and you can just say to your uh, colleague to download the docker file or even better the docker compose yaml file that defines uh, the, the really the uh, a stack of uh, of containers uh, and the, the the second way is uh, uh, using the the um, a registry or a docker registry you can just when you uh, have an image locally and you want to uh, share just the image, so you don't want to share the Docker file. You can just issue Docker push with the name of the image uh, command. With, with this command, the, the the image will be published on a Docker registry and will be available for all the people that can access uh, to this registry. The registry can be a public one. The 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 one uh, that it's the main one is the Docker Hub. That's the registry, so you can push. Uh, images there, and you can have an internal for your organization uh, uh, registry. You can uh, you, you can have it. It's not really straightforward to install it. 
but there are commercial products to, uh, to, to do that. And you can also use on the Docker app, you can choose if you want to uh, share it, share your images with everybody, or you want just to do uh, private images it just, that you uh, share just with your collaborators. So like that, I just want to share a private one. Yeah. If you, you, excuse me? The so basically, actually, I want to create a custom image and I want to share to my colleagues. Yeah. I prefer to create a local registry. Yeah, so, so the question is uh, if, if it's possible to, to create a, a local registry. Yes, the answer is, 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 uh, is absolutely yes. There are some uh, uh, commercial products that uh, allows you to um, create, to, to just uh, deploy on your network a local registry. And uh, I have used one, it's called Artifactory, that, that just works, works fine. Uh, so you, you can use that, you can, and uh, when you do a, a common docker push, you usually uh, push there, but uh, the workflow, when you, when you do that, it's, you, there are not users that are going to push images on your uh, um, internal registry. Usually you have the, um, the, um, the continuous integration uh, machine that it's do it, that's, that creates the artifact that is going to publish that on your, uh, e, uh, of your, in your um, uh, internal registry. What you share with your colleague is usually the Docker file. So you say, I've got the Docker file, so just take the Docker file uh, and with the Docker build, you will create a mini image in your local registry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks to you. So we have another talk for stay for another 15 minutes. We'll introduce Cloud Foundry and then we'll make a small announcement.